You are welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I am Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary is intended to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Monday, the 21st day of March 2022, and our topic for today is Why You Need Divine Anointing, Part 1. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, our Lord and our King, our all-powerful, all-wise God, our God who anoints our head with fresh oil and causes our cup to overflow. Father, we worship and we bless your name. We say be exalted in Jesus' name. We thank you for last week and we thank you for the new week. Take preeminence in Jesus' name. As we study your word today, we ask that Lord you would speak to us, cause our ears to hear your voice, and cause our hearts to be yielding. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah 10 verse 27 reads, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah 10 verse 27 And our scripture reading for today is from the book of Exodus chapter 40 from verse 12 to 15. Exodus 40 verse 12 to 15 reads, And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of congregation, and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments, and anoint him, and sanctify him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons, and clothe them with coats, and thou shalt anoint them, as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our topic for today one more time is Why You Need Divine Anointing, Part 1. And our Father in the Lord tells us today, that many people do not know how important the anointing is, and so they despise it. I have seen situations in which some brethren refused to be ordained because they ignorantly thought that refusing the anointing that comes with ordination is a sign of humility. They could not be further from the truth. Exodus 30 verse 25 says, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. From the scripture above, we can safely deduce that there are different kinds of anointing. Today, we will be discussing divine anointing which is holy and can be gotten from God. This is the kind of anointing everyone should thirst and yearn for. One of the reasons for divine anointing is service. According to Exodus chapter 28 verse 41, God commanded Moses to anoint Aaron and his children, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Exodus chapter 28 verse 41 Divine anointing seals promotion, as found in 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. This is the case of Saul after he was divinely chosen to be the first king of Israel. Promotion, particularly in spiritual assignments, take greater responsibility, which requires divine backing. In the RCCG, we ordain people in stages as they assume greater spiritual responsibility. As we see in our memory verse today, divine anointing breaks yokes. Divine anointing makes the impossible possible. Classic examples of divine anointing are when Samson tore a lion into two with his bare hands. Judges chapter 14 verse 5 to 6. And in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 33 to 36, that relates the exploits of David under divine anointing. He killed a lion and a bear after he had been anointed by Samuel. There is nothing a man under God's anointing cannot do. I therefore urge you to seek the anointing of the Holy Spirit today. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are still considering the topic, Why You Need Divine Anointing, Part 1. Praise God. From the understanding of English, there is a whole world of difference between a want and a need. While something that a person wants may just be to satisfy a craving or a desire, 
or a longing for that particular thing, a need is totally different. When you have a need, whether you want it or not, it is in your best interest for it to be fulfilled. And today our Father in the Lord tells us of why we need divine anointing. In other words, as believers, we must see beyond our wants and actually understand that for us to function optimally and be efficient in the assignments that God has given us, then we need this divine anointing. We learned from our devotional today that one of the reasons for divine anointing is service. When God divinely anoints you, you receive the grace for all that you need for effective and acceptable service. Our Father in the Lord says divine anointing makes the impossible possible. A man without divine anointing can be sure to suffer limitations and multiple setbacks on his journey. Praise the Lord. From scripture, we can see examples of the lives of people turned around because of the anointing. The prophet Samuel speaking to Saul said, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. When you are anointed, you are transformed into another man. You receive a shift and you are changed. This was also true in the life of the prophet Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 46, we are told that and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran after Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now just to get a clearer perspective to the distance we are talking about, Elijah ran about 20 miles, which is equivalent to about 32 kilometers, and he ran on foot, overtaking the chariot of Ahab. You can see what our Father in the Lord means when he says, the anointing of God is so powerful, hallelujah. Divine anointing makes the impossible possible. Still from the life of the prophet Elijah, when he was about leaving, he asked Elisha what he would want of him before he be taken away. And Elisha said he wanted a double portion of the spirit or the anointing that was upon him. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, when he was taken away, verse 13 tells us about Elisha that he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Verse 14 says, And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Now there are only a few people in scripture who are able to part waters and walk through it. We have Moses, Elijah, and now Elisha also because he received a double portion of the anointing. Verse 15 of 2 Kings chapter 2 tells us, And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. In other words, they confirmed that the anointing had rested on him, and they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. A man who carries divine anointing does not need to make noise. The anointing itself is attractive. It would command respect and favor. We can go on and on with examples, demonstrating the need for divine anointing. But we'll go ahead to pray now. We'll bow our heads and say, Father, please anoint me today with your divine anointing in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing rest upon me today for even greater exploits to your glory in the name of Jesus. Pray like you sincerely desire it. Say, Father, let your anointing rest on me and transform me into another man. Let your anointing rest upon me and let me do what was thought to be impossible for you. Let your anointing rest upon me and break every yoke of limitation and whatever does not bring you glory in our lives. Let your anointing come upon us and set us apart to minister unto you in the name of Jesus. Ask him today for the manifestation and the evidence of his anointing. Let our lives become channels of solutions to many in the name of Jesus and let us do exploits for our Lord and our King. We work many miracles, we do the impossible, and we would always be victorious. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our dear Father and our God, we thank you for the showers of your divine anointing today. We ask for fresh grace and fresh anointing to do even more for you to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have an action point in our devotional today that says, Purge yourself of anything that could hinder the flow of divine anointing into your life today. And we receive the grace to do that in Jesus' name. Praise God. We also have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Judges chapter 21 down to the book of Ruth chapter 1. Hallelujah. 
We want to appreciate you for joining us today again. Thank you for coming around. We believe you have been blessed. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Remember that you can also be a blessing to someone today by sharing this with them. As you go for today, receive the grace to manifest divine anointing in Jesus' name. We'll be singing our hymn for today, which is the hymn one from our Open Heavens devotional. We'll be singing all to Jesus, I surrender. Have a great week ahead. See you tomorrow again and bye for now. I believe you enjoyed today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.